I'm Brian Sampson. And I'm Jeff Broderick. And this is the Mainline Solutions Short. And Jeff and I were just talking about IBM and DB2 uh, around analytics. And there's uh, an offering around analytics acceleration from IBM. What is it that customers do today that they might require something like this? So Brian, what I wanted to talk about for a little bit was the IBM DB2 Analytics Accelerator. And in particular, how it affects and benefits and adds value to the existing system Z environment and ecosystem. Got it. And what are, what are customers doing today? Let's say they don't have this. So in most shops today, prior to the uh, introduction of the accelerator uh, technology, uh, they were often taking and uh, extract, transforming, and loading data from existing system Z data sets, DB2, IMS, IDMS. And they were taking that data and loading it into existing data warehousing platforms, almost always off host. Those data warehousing platforms, as we know, would tend to, to proliferate. So they would have a test one, a development, and so forth. And before long, they have hundreds of servers and hundreds of, of storage devices out there that are being used to manage a data warehousing environment. Then they would almost always also need additional DBA resources just to maintain both the ETL jobs in case a DB2 table changed, mm -hmm. in addition to defining special uh, table structures in the data warehouse itself, specifically to enable it to perform. Wow, that's a lot of resources. It, so, it so certainly can be. It certainly <laughs> sounds like it. So along comes this guy, and yes. how does that help with all that? So part of the beauty of the Analytics Accelerator is it dramatically improves the ability to eliminate a lot of the extract, transform, and load jobs, the ETL jobs. Additionally, it enables the DB2 DBA resources to focus on what they do best, which is designing operational and production type data sets and, and data tables and structures. Um, that's what the core of your business is built on. Mm -hmm. That's where they need to be doing the really great design work. Secondly, is that they can enable these with the accelerator by just a checkbox within the data studio to be accelerated for their end user queries. So there's a significant resource savings. Some other real advantages of the accelerator itself is related specifically to the near real time capabilities of the data in the accelerator itself. There are capabilities with both the loader and with change data capture technologies that are included or part of the accelerator solution that enable the customer to schedule when, I'm talking DBA resources as the customer, to schedule how near real time the data is and how frequently that data is refreshed within the accelerator. The beauty of that is the end users no longer have to wait days, weeks, or maybe even months for their data to be extracted, transformed, and loaded into this off-host data warehouse platform. They now have it in a very near real time so they can make very spontaneous, very real-time business decisions. Wow. So I'm, I'm new at all this, and you said a lot of things, and I hear that there's a lot of savings by doing this. How is it physically doing it? Is it getting the data closer to DB2 and the process that are going on? So part of that is true. Absolutely correct. The data is closer to DB2. So the appliances, or the accelerator itself is available in two different, I would say, offerings or models. One of those is a separate standalone appliance based on pure data technology, okay? So it's a standalone appliance that is network connected, a dedicated network, high speed, to the existing system Z environment. The second one is you can actually deploy the accelerator technology or software within IFLs sitting inside the same system Z frame. So the reality there is now you have memory level speed transfers to load these tables, to load this data. Additionally, if you're using the IFL approach, the data is residing in memory within the IFL accelerator environment. So you are getting very close proximity to data, very high speed data transmission capabilities when you want to refresh or reload, in addition to the, the seamless integration for your end users. The key thing here, Brian, is to keep in, keep in mind that to your end users that were already doing queries against DB2, they're not going to really notice anything has changed. The secret sauce lies in the optimizer of DB2. So the DBAs enable, through Data Studio and a checkbox, the data tables that are to be loaded into the accelerator. The end users will issue their normal, regular queries. When they issue the queries, it comes into the optimizer, and the optimizer decides what gets offloaded to the accelerator, and or if it's reasonable to offload it to the acceler accelerator for speed of execution then it sends the results set back to the end user and the end user hasn't had to change anything 
They're just doing their queries as usual. Wow, well, yeah, totally behind the scenes way to optimize your environment. I get that. So let's just say you sold me. I want to go ahead and implement something like this. It's something that Mainline can help. And, and what are the savings? I mean, I see tremendous amount of savings here. Well, yeah, Mainline absolutely can come in and assist you in what I, I would say cost justification of the acceleration platform. We can help you identify what is the best fit for your environment, mm -hmm. what size of an accelerator you should perhaps look into, and also where you have other data warehousing off hosts that may be due for a refresh, where we can justify with additional cost savings uh, to, to get a modern, near real-time, accelerated environment in place. Well, Jeff, thank you. <laughs> We've certainly learned a lot about that. And I'm Brian Sampson. And I'm Jeff Broderick. And this has been a Mainline Solutions Short. Sure.